What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2018 Calc ABBC free response question number four. So let's get started. For part A, we have to do two things. We're going to estimate h prime of six, and then we're going to interpret the meaning of this in the context of the problem. Now, if we want to approximate h prime of six, what we're going to do here is we're going to pick two values of t that are really close to six, something like five and seven. So these are going to be the points that we use to approximate the instantaneous rate of change. So we're going to do h of 7 minus h of 5 over 7 minus 5. Now, ultimately, we have to use correct units. So the trick to always getting the units right is thinking about for the function values h, the units are meters. So we're going to write meters here over the values for t, see the 7 and 5, the units are years. So we're going to say meters per year. And now we just have to simplify this. So this is going to work out to 11 minus 6 over 7 minus 5 is 2. And we have meters per year. And this is going to work out to 5 over 2 meters per year. But now for this next part, we have to interpret the meaning in the context of the problem. So the trick to this is I just think about if this was just a function without a story behind it. If I said something like h prime of 6 is greater than, is greater than 0, that means that h is increasing at t equals 6. So now I just have to piece all of this together. And instead of saying h is increasing, so I'll leave a blank here. Obviously on the AP test, don't actually, you don't have to underline it like this. But instead of saying like blank is increasing, we just have to fill in the blank and think about which function does h model. h models the height of the tree at any given time t. So what we could say is that the height of the tree that's what's increasing. So the height of the tree, this is what's increasing. And this is increasing at a rate of approximately. So now we're writing the word approximately here because remember, this is just an estimate. So at a rate of approximately, and now we write our answer, the 5 over 2 meters per year. And we could specify here too at t equals 6 years. For part b, we're going to use the mean value theorem. And the giveaway is that we have to explain why h prime is going to equal 2 at some point between 2 and 10. If it were intermediate value theorem, they would say something like this. Explain why there's a value t such that h of t is equal to, let's say, 8. And notice, on our way from 1.5 to 15, we have to pass through 8. But notice we're talking about h prime, so definitely the mean value theorem. Now, the first dilemma we're going to run into in this question, or the first trap, is... Well, one thing I see a lot is that students always assume that the endpoints are going to be the ones that we use when we find the average rate of change. So they're just going to do h of 10 minus h of 2 over 10 minus 2. But notice 15 minus 1 and a half is 13.5 over, and then we have 10 minus 2 is 8, and this is not equal to 2. Okay, so we're not going to use the endpoints here. So this is a very annoying little trap here. So what we have to do is we have to go on a scavenger hunt for two points that have a slope equal to 2. And these are the points here. So what we're actually going to have is h of 5 minus h of 3 over 5 minus 3. And if we complete this, we're going to have 6 minus 2 divided by 2. And 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So there's our two points that we need. But in order to use the mean value theorem, we have to state that our function is differentiable and continuous. And notice they told us our function is differentiable. So since h is differentiable, so once we make the statement that h is differentiable, differentiability implies continuity. So h is differentiable implies that h is continuous. And now once we state this, once we state that h is differentiable and h is continuous, now we could use the mean value theorem. So we're going to say by the mean value theorem. And now for there exists, we're going to say there exists with the backwards capital E. That's a nice abbreviation of there must be. So there must be a value t. And t is, in this case, going to be between 3 and 5. Notice we use t equals 3 and t equals 5 for our function. So the t value is going to be between 3 and 5. And now we could throw in our conclusion such that h prime of t is equal to 2. Okay, And this is going to wrap it up. Because once again, we already showed the work for finding the average rate of change between t equals 3 and t equals 5. 
So now we could just tack that onto our conclusion here. Now, what might be throwing people off is notice they said to explain for the interval from 2 to 10, and in our explanation, we use the interval from 3 to 5. But one thing to be mindful of is that when you're between 2 and 10, our subinterval, which is not necessarily drawn to scale here, but from 3 to 5, notice that this is a subset of the bigger interval. So if we're trying to find a value t between 2 and 10, and we found one from 3 to 5, the one from 3 to 5 does count as a value t between 2 and 10. Now for part C, we want to find the average height, and we have to know this formula when we show up to the AP test, the average function value formula given here. And we're going to apply it to this function for h between 2 and 10. So we're going to have 1 over 10 minus 2, the integral from 2 to 10, and then we have h of t dt. And this is going to be equal to 1 eighth, and then we have the integral from 2 to 10, and we have h of t dt. Now, just in case you forget how to do a trapezoid sum, one thing that will be really helpful is drawing this out. So if you have a hard time remembering formulas, then the trick is to just plot the points from the table and now connect them with trapezoids since they're telling us to do a trapezoid sum. So we just draw in these trapezoids. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of these four trapezoids and then just add them together. Okay, but notice the fact that it's average value means there's going to be a one eighth in front. So this integral is, or this expression is roughly equal to one eighth. And now we'll throw in our bracket. So the area of a single trapezoid is one half height base one plus base two uh, multiplied together. So what we're going to have first is one half times the height from two to three is equal to one. And now we have base one plus base two. So we have two and a half, I'm sorry, we have one and a half plus two. So we have 1.5 plus two. And that's going to give us the area of the first trapezoid. Now the second trapezoid, we have one half. The height is equal to two because we're going from three to five now. So we have half times two. And then we have two plus six. And then we've got one half times the next subinterval here from five to seven is going up two. And then we have six plus 11. Now the last one, we have one half times this subinterval from 7 to 10, we're going up 3, or across 3, and then we have the bases are 11 and 15. So we close this, and then we could throw a bracket around the end like this. And now just be mindful, the bases are the parallel sides of a trapezoid. So that's why it does throw people off sometimes, but the bases are actually going vertical here. And now the beauty of this part of the AP test is we don't actually have to simplify. We could just leave our final answer like this and say that this is the average height of the tree from 2 to 10. So part D, related rates, this was a little bit tough, but the key is you just have to read very carefully. Now, some of the stuff that you need to know for part D is you have to know the chain rule. You have to know that when we're taking the derivative with respect to time and we have a function of x, that's the same thing as taking the derivative with respect to x and then multiplying by dx dt. Okay, now as we go through this, we have a function g of x and x is the diameter of the base of the tree. And now we're given some information. We have when the tree is 50 meters tall, so just be mindful that the height of the tree is referred to by g of x. Okay, so g represents the height and x represents the diameter. So what we have here is the diameter of the base of the tree is increasing at a rate of 0.03 meters per year. So this part, they just told us, they just told us dx dt equals 0.03 and we have meters per year. And now according to this model, we wanna know the rate of change of the height of the tree. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for dg over dt. Okay, so this is like what we're actually trying to find. And at the moment when the tree is 50 meters tall. So we have to go on a little bit of a side quest here. If we want to find out when is the, when is the tree 50 meters tall, we're going to replace g of x with 50. So we have 50 equals, and now this part is just algebra. We have 100x over 1 plus x. So if you call this 50 over 1, you could just cross multiply, and you're going to have 100x equals 50 times 1 plus 50 times x. And now subtract 50x on both sides. You'll have 50x equals 50, telling you that x equals 1. So this is not our answer, but it's a piece of the puzzle. So we're going to need this piece and this piece. And now comes the related rates part. So for this one, I actually just wrote this as g equals 100x over, and then we have 1 plus x. And be mindful that we want to find the rate of change with respect to time. 
which tells us we're taking the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So this is where that chain rule step comes in. On the left side, we're going to have dg over dt equals, and on the right side, we have to do the quotient rule, but we're going to have the low function 1 plus x times the derivative of 100x. But we're not, when we do the derivative with respect to time, we have to do the derivative with respect to x, which is 100. So we have times 100, and then we have dx dt we have to tack on. So this is kind of like the technique. It's Well, it's chain rule, but we see this a lot in implicit differentiation and in related rates questions. So now we have minus 100x. So we're still doing the quotient rule times the derivative of the bottom function. The derivative of 1 plus x is 1, but then we have to multiply by dx over dt. And now we just divide by the denominator squared. So now from this step, we're just going to plug in. So we're looking for dg over dt, specifically at x equals 1. We could say when the height is 50, but we could also say at x equals 1. And now this is going to be equal to 1 plus 1. And then we have times 100 times dx dt is 0 0.03, but we could just call that 3 over 100. And now we have minus 100 times 1. dx dt is still 3 over 100. And we're dividing all of this by 1 plus 1 squared, so we have 2 squared. Now notice 100 over 100 cancels. 100 over 100 cancels here as well. And now we have 6 on top minus 3. So we have 6 minus 3 is 3 over 2 squared is 4. And the units in meters per year is going to give us our final answer, 3 fourths meters per year. Okay, this is going to conclude this video, and thanks for sticking it out to the end.